Joining me here in the Al Jazeera studio is Robert Fisk, a foreign correspondent at the Independent Newspaper. He has lived and written about the Middle East for more than 30 years. You have had a very long day with us. Thank you. Thank You're you for welcome. sticking around and talking to me. Uh, you've been kind enough to give me uh, a bit of what is in your paper tomorrow. Can That's I read right. a little bit back? Are you sure you can? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you say it was the same old story. Palestinians can have a viable state, Israel a secure one. Israel cannot be delegitimized. Uh, the Palestinians must not attempt to ask the UN for statehood in September. Is that the big takeaway from this speech? For you? I thought it was a very boring speech. You did. You I, I said dull. Like, you said yeah, boring. I, I, I didn't think it took us anywhere on the Middle East. I don't think the Americans understand what's happening out here. He wants a new role, but it's the Middle East that's new and becoming new. Mm -hmm. And you know, we were told, um, oh well, we'd like a, we're going to set out our new role in the Middle East. Why doesn't he ask the Arabs what they want America's role to be yeah. in their region? Robert, has anybody calibrated it correctly? Has the EU calibrated what's happening in this, we're calling it the Arab Spring? Has uh, anyone got it right so far? Turkey, possibly. Possibly Turkey. Um, Turkey has given the right advice with the right words. Uh, but, I mean, <laughs> Syria's got it wrong. Iran's got it yeah. wrong. Um, I guess I'm just looking. I, You're looking I, I at take the West, your, aren't you? yeah, yeah, I'm taking your, your, your criticism of, of, of the president. Mm. Uh, on face value, but I'm wondering who has it even close to correct at this point because events are happening so quickly. Yes, that is true, but I think the problem is that America doesn't realize that its power and influence in the Middle East is declining. Mm. It doesn't realize that Israel's power may well be declining. Israel hasn't got near working out what this Arab Spring means. We've now got, uh, what if a million Palestinians decide to go home to the original Palestine? And we saw a little bit in Lebanon sure, sure, uh, the weekend, yes. and Syria uh, only 15, 14, 36 yes. hours ago. Uh, I think that um, the Americans simply have not grasped yet the significance of the changes going on here. And the fact that um, Arab people are no longer afraid. And when you lose your fear, you never get it back again. And yeah. they do not want US policy in the way it's being set up. And that, that Egyptian speaker and also your correspondent uh, in Jerusalem has got it completely right. Would it have been beneficial for those who are fighting for these freedoms uh, in the Arab world to have heard from the U.S. president? Yes. Okay, course. go ahead. Yeah. You finish. No, no, no. You, you I, 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 I said this. I wrote about it at the time. <laughs> okay. I was in Egypt for the full revolution. And I said there, this is a moment when if at the beginning, on the first day, the 25th, if the American president had come out and said, we support the protesters, but he failed. He didn't have the guts for it. And in fact, the first major statement about anyone not in the Egyptian government came from Gates, who, who, who praised the restraint of the Egyptian army. It was the restraint of the people that he should have been praising. Did he have to calibrate that kind of a statement? I'm just pushing back, just, just for no. the sake of the discussion. Did he have to calibrate that kind of a statement against reaction from other partners uh, in the Middle East, uh, say Saudi Arabia? I think Saudi is, is correct. Okay. Um, nor, and I'm, I'm certain that the reason why Bahrain is behaving so weirdly in his arrests is because the Saudis are not going to allow there to be an elected prime minister of that country. And Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia is still the key state to look at and study and learn about. Israel, the Palestinians, yes. uh, moving forward, it, it is difficult to see what the president can say. First of all, did you think that he took a step forward no. in saying we've, 67 we've had borders? We've 67 before. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and it's obvious that Netanyahu is not going to listen to him. He hasn't listened right. to him in the past. I mean, at one point he was offering Netanyahu a bribe that I worked at came to $163 a second. But can I, can I tell you the, the reality of, of what is the president's position less than a year from the start of the, the re-election campaign already, just based on this speech today, which you are saying doesn't move the ball at all. No. One of his likely challengers uh, from the Republican side, Mitt Romney, former yeah. Massachusetts governor, yeah. is already yeah. saying yeah. that the president has thrown Israel under the bus. Yes, that's right. Look, I think you've got to realize, I mean, I go to the States a lot, yeah, and yes, I've done a lot yes. of work on the Israeli lobby there, or the Likud lobby, in fact. It's not Israeli, it's the Likudist lobby. And I don't think it's possible for an American president now to be fair on the Middle East. It's as simple as that. Robert, appreciate it. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you for your time. Thank you.